we'll move on to the final talk of this session, which is not not so much a talk as uh, perhaps a bit of a workshop. <laughs> so it might seem a bit strange with Gaia DR3 being at least two years away, but the work starts now. The work um, has started. And yeah. Okay, the work has started. Uh, and Nick is going to tell us a little bit about that and he's going to ask for input. Yeah. Hopefully that will ping up on there in a minute. And if it doesn't... I'll switch to plan B. Yeah. Oh, oh, maybe I have to use the VGA one. Oh, no, got there in the end. Right. Okay. So I was just going to... Right. I, I was just going to say a little bit about how we collect up uh, the uh, requirements, really, which uh, define what the... Uh, the, the Gaia archive is, and note that the uh, the problem for putting out the data becomes a little bit bigger in DR3 because of the data volumes, and it becomes quite significant in DR4. And uh, this is where I think uh, user input is 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 uh, quite handy to uh, to to get in terms of defining what we actually develop for those interfaces. So I just sort of point out, of course, that you know where the archive is, the HTTP version, if you want seamless access via SAMP to some of the connected uh, helper application tools, or the HTTPS if you're more worried about uh, uh, security. Um, the requirements were shaped by uh, the community in the first instance, uh, modulated, of course, by what the user archive team uh, uh, can can develop, so they took account, I would say, took account of the user requirements and tried to respond to all the re user requirements that we put together. And this has resulted in a range of interfaces, so you've seen the, uh, the HTML page, um, you've seen the various ways that you can query the, uh, the, uh, the catalogs that are, that are released through sort of simple queries, advanced queries. There are also uh, API programmatic interfaces, so uh, some, uh, if you're sort of a Python aficionado and uh, you want to access the data through Astro Pi, for instance, that's been enabled. And there are a number of visualization uh, capabilities that were put out with the archive uh, that have got a certain degree of, uh, of uh, uh, functionality connected to access to the actual archive. So the visualization sits with, with the archive data and there's some uh, nicer uh, features between the, the visualizer and the uh, querying the data, for instance. So how did this sort of process go about? Well, we started this back in June 2011. That seemed uh, quite a while ago through one of our uh, Gaia networks. Uh, and we issued a call uh, which went out asking the, uh, the community for their sort of how do they want to get data. So, you know, this was simple sort of thing which said, I want to be able to read the documentation, for instance, or find me all the data at a point to uh, sort of more complex requirements about, you know, give me the associated probability distribution functions or, or whatever. Um, we collected up those re requirements. Uh, we ranked them across a number of uh, 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 vectors. So we looked at things like scale, the sort of uh, what we regarded as the sort of science priorities at some level. Um, the issues around uh, functionality, issues around uh, uh, reliability, and these sort of things, and we came up with a, a ranking assessment for these uh, for these usage cases, which went in, uh, described in a document, which is uh, uh, available on the uh, public uh, document page of the ESA Gaia web pages. So you can look for that document and see the list of uh, cases that we had at the time. Um, now, just to point out that this on the Gaia release scenario page is what we're saying about uh, DR3, and it's uh, stated as being first half of 21, and uh, the nominal mission uh, release, so final release really is talking about the data release of the uh, nominal five-year mission, but of course Gaia's already had its first uh, 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 mission extension uh, year approved, and... Uh, 
no doubt there will be a couple more of those uh, uh, segments approved, so it could end up as a 10-year mission. But that's the final release for the five-year period. Uh, just to point out there, DR2 was about 800 gigabytes of data, so it's a fairly modest, uh, I mean, it's a very rich data set. Uh, there's not much... Uh, in that data set to throw away, so information rich. But the uh, next release is probably going to be of the order of 50 terabytes. It depends a little bit on what actually goes into that, into that list of, uh, of data products going out, and that's uh, being firmed up and finalised in the, in, the in the coming months. Uh, I should add a little note that as we... Uh, finalise more concretely what the data products will be, there will be more information provided on these pages in advance of the release so that you as a community get a better idea of what's actually coming up. Uh, DR, DR4, I have to call that final release DR4, that could be a, of order a petabyte because that's when the bulk epoch uh, photometry, things like the, uh, 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 the spectra come out as well and these are largest data set. So a petabyte is still reasonably large in uh, that's, uh, 23, 24. <laughs> I have to be, have to be uh, cautious with dates here. Uh, okay, so that's worth noting that these are some of the uh, usage scenarios that we uh, uh, defined uh, from our previous uh, uh, use case assessment and this is giving an example of how some of these were tested against you know the, the, the features and functionality that were actually available uh, that's in DR1. Uh, we've taken these uh, uh, cases they're coded against also uh, uh, issues such as extragalactic cases, stellar cases, there's a number of categorizations. If you come to put in your, your uh, requirement ideas, or usage scenarios as we, as we call them, uh, and you can't think which one it's, which area of astronomy it's uh, relevant for, just put it in the other case, the catch or miscellaneous case. Uh, we read them all. Uh, but uh, they were basically covering, there was a reasonable coverage for against DR1, uh, 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 a good coverage against DR2. I think as DR3 comes into play, uh, the community requirements for how they want to work with the data and access the data is probably less well covered. So we do encourage uh, uh, more uh, uh, requirements to come in. Otherwise, there is a slight danger that the archive functionality will be not a lot different to what it is at the moment. <laughs> so the more you ask for... Uh, the more you might get. So, uh, that's the page that you... Uh, that doesn't always happen, does it? But in this one, it might. Gaia, it really does keep on giving. It's a bit of a long web address there, but uh, great wiki, Gaia data access, and look for great.as.cap. Uh, please put some in. Uh, there is some. Uh, there have been a few. If you're on various Gaia mailing lists, you will already had an email or two about this. Uh, we basically will accept any uh, ideas coming in at any point, but we are going to be reviewing and having a, a sort of cut-off point for what we're looking at for our sort of first round of uh, of up updates. So anything by the end of uh, December would be really good uh, because we'll be reviewing what else has come in, ranking these, uh, and uh, using these to scope uh, the, and update the requirements which are then fed into the development uh, teams working in the ESA uh, archive group. Um, that's, the, that's the page uh, with, some, with some description of what you have to do. Note the deadline. If you're infused, because I've heard some great talks this morning, there are going to be some great talks this afternoon. Everybody's had to get the data somehow. They might think, well, maybe we just didn't want it. I wouldn't mind betting, actually, that everybody who worked on that just downloaded the 800 gigs <coughs> and didn't use the archive interface. Once they get to the petabyte, that might be a bit more of a problem. So you might need to think about it, the, 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 the sort of, you know, 
current techniques might not work so well. So if you do, if you do think of something, please put it in. And uh, that was basically all I wanted to say. Uh, go to that page when you get home tonight, because you would have thought about it, and, and write something down. And it can be as long or as short as you want, and if it looks like a great idea, and we don't quite understand what you meant, we'll get back to you as well. <laughs> right, okay, that's all I wanted to say. Thanks very much. Okay, thank you, Nick. <laughs> Maybe we should have a show of hands, and who used the, inter who, who used the archive interface? Well, you're wrong. You're wrong. That's much better than you thought. <laughs> that, that's that, that's good. Okay. Are there any questions for Nick before we adjourn for lunch? Okay. I, I guess that everybody's very hungry. So, can we thank all our speakers again for this morning's excellent contribution?